Hello, and welcome to another Fire for Developers tutorial video. My name is Gino Canessa, and today we are working on part four of our Fire Search uh, extravaganza. Um, today we're going to focus on chaining, reverse chaining, uh, including and reverse including. Uh, and these are ways of following links between resources, either searching via those links or uh, including them in the results that you get back. Uh, as always, there's a lot to do, so let's jump right in. Uh, I'm starting, again, as become common on uh, this uh, series so far, on the Fire Search page. And uh, there's no great navigation to get here yet. Uh, we do have a ticket open to work on that, so hopefully uh, at some point here uh, soon there will be. Uh, for now, there will be a link on the GitHub repo. Uh, and as always, you can always do find on your web page and look for chained or chaining, and you'll find those things. Uh, and what we're going to start with is chaining, uh, what's called chaining in Fire. Uh, and this is how you search kind of following links to other resources. Um, in general, Fire says you should only link in one direction, uh, and that direction is from the many to the few. So in this case, we can go from, for instance, encounter to the patient, but there's no good link from the patient to the encounter. Uh, and that's because you don't want to be updating, assuming that you're keeping track of all of your uh, changes and states and all those things. You don't want to be updating your patient record every time you add a new encounter. Uh, you want to just make your encounter point at the patient. So it's one, one direction of linking and uh, go from there. Uh, the syntax it uses is this dot syntax. So it's actually pretty straightforward. Uh, let's go ahead and play a little bit. Uh, I'll note I'm using my local server instead of there. I just loaded some Cynthia data and uh, wanted to uh, do that just because uh, the other one's been up and down while I'm recording this. So uh, first let's look at patients. Uh, as we've looked at before, we could do something like uh, some, a patient whose given name starts with Aaron and whose family name starts with the letter S. Uh, and this is should return a single patient in my context uh, because I happen to know that, but there's one Aaron S loaded in the server right now. That's the other reason why I'm using the local server. So uh, if we wanted to do this manually, we can see we can grab this I ID. Oops, if I hit the right button, uh, we can grab that ID uh, and then we can use it in other places. So we know that encounter, uh, and we don't necessarily know that, so let's go look. Uh, if we go to encounter and look at the search parameters all the way at the end, as always, uh, there are gonna be two search parameters that we could use to find the patient. Uh, the first one is the very well-named patient. Uh, and this is, if we look at the encounter resource, there isn't actually an element called patient there is an element called subject, uh, but a subject could be a group or a patient. So in this case, there's this extra search parameter that is just patient to say, well, only give me the uh, ones that follow this link and it resolves to a patient resource. So that sounds like the kind of thing we want. We can see it's a reference. Uh, and so we can do things like search encounters uh, and give me where the patient is patient and use the ID. And we can see that gives us a set of, in this case, 28 encounters, and they are all going to have the subject of this same Mr. Aaron 697 Steidman 542. So that's our patient, uh, and we can search that and do that. But we did have to do two round trips to the server. So in order to get this result, we had to go ask for the patient record first, uh, do the search, get the results back from the server, parse them, grab the ID, construct this query, uh, and send it to the server. Now, if we use chaining, and again, these things are defined, obviously you have to check to see if they're supported on your server, but we can actually just use the same query that we're having but with chaining. So we can say patient given is Aaron. Oops, uh, Aaron. And we can add uh, patient's family name. 
starts with an S. Uh, and just uh, the syntax, if we're not familiar, you can add these all in the same line or do one per line in this uh, particular tool. So these are just appending the query parameters. Uh, and you can see we ran our query, and it's probably a little easier if I close it and rerun it. Uh, but you can see now we're still getting back our 28 results uh, because we're saying starts with Aaron S. Uh, if we switch those to Aaron B, for instance, uh, you can see now we have two results. So it's going and, oh, those were patients. Uh, apologies, I clicked the wrong link. Uh, but we can see here if we change the uh, encounter search, eventually it will come through. And there we go. Uh, we have 42 encounters for uh, Aaron B because there were two patients with Aaron B. Uh, so it's just running that search and just following those down the chain. Now, uh, it is actually possible to do the opposite direction search. There's no link for it, and that's why it's called reverse chaining. Uh, because what we're going to do is say we want to follow the link backwards. So in this case, you can see it's using observation uh, from patient. Uh, and observation works the same way as encounter does, that we can say, okay, I want a patient that has a link from an observation to a patient and uh, has an observation code 12345. I apologize for that auto pop-up menu. I need to uh, update everything and uh, have not found that setting yet. So uh, you can see that it's a little bit more complicated even just describing this, and it makes sense. Uh, because what we're trying to do is say, give me a patient that has some sort of observation that points to a patient, because there has to be that link there. So we need to describe it. That's what this part does. And then we want to say also that observation, so that same resource we picked here, has a code of 12345. So what does it look like in practice? Uh, same thing. Uh, let's go through and run, grab some encounters because we have the wrong set of encounters right now. And it is trying to run. Maybe, maybe not. Encounters. There we go. Um, so we can do the same thing here. We can say, let's grab, uh, you know, a status of finished. That's something we can search on. So if we said, instead of looking for a patient that has Aaron S, we could say, I want a patient that has an encounter that points via the patient search parameter to this patient and uh, has a status of finished. Uh, now, in this case, it's probably going to give us a lot of patients uh, because almost every patient in here is going to have that status. So, but you can see with, uh, and that's why searching for condition or observation, uh, different things that narrow this more would probably be a better fit, but you can see how it works. Uh, what we're doing is saying, follow this link. So we want something that has an encounter that points to a patient and has an encounter status of finished. Uh, and we could look for specific things, like we want um, encounters that have, uh, you know, search for this, uh, oh, uh, oh, these are the patient records, so we need to search the uh, encounters to find more details. But uh, if you wanted, you know, observations, patient records that have uh, blood pressure, uh, you can do a search for observations with blood pressures uh, and then uh, get the patients for that. So that's chaining and reverse chaining. You're just following the links one way or following the links the other way. But what if you actually want both pieces? Uh, there, we actually go scroll a little bit further down past all of these and stop looking and instead look include and reverse include. Uh, and these do kind of the same thing as chaining, except instead of part of the search query, we're using them as part of the results. 
So in this case, uh, to use our same uh, encounter search that we were using, we can say also, uh, why don't you include the encounter patient? And so when we search for this, and it's waiting, it's waiting. Apologies for that. There we go. Uh, so now we have still our 28 records because it's telling us how many records were included. Uh, and we have a bunch of resource type encounters. But if we keep looking through, that's probably the last uh, encounter, the last resource in the bundle, it, there's a patient record. And so what we did is said, do this search, which is just the search we did, and we can have the chaining here or not, uh, but also go ahead and give me the patient. Now we can see in the um, result bundle, so not in the resource itself, but in the bundle, we can see that the encounter had the search mode of match. This was something we asked for that was a result of our query. Uh, and then we can also have this search mode include, which is just to say this was a resource that wasn't here from searching, it was just here because you asked for additional things for me to include. Uh, and so you can see it just gave us the patient. There's, there's really not a ton here. We can make this a much more general query. So we can say, just give me all encounters and include the encounter patients. Uh, and then we can see that we have, for instance, an encounter, uh, a bunch of different encounters. And then at the bottom, we have a few different patients. So we're gonna have oh, just the one patient because uh, that's it. Now the rule for including is it needs to be in the same bundle. So that's why if we wanted to go through and follow the next link and get a different set of uh, encounters, then we would have uh, different patients uh, added as well. So here's our, our friend Testy McTestface. Uh, but as we add different parameters, we can see that we're just saying, keep including things. Now, reverse include does the same thing. So before here, we were saying, uh, give me the uh, patients that have an encounter pointing to the patient and that have a status finish. Uh, and now we can actually do a rev include. Here, let's pull this back up. So you can see um, we do the same type of thing. We're just saying uh, here it's talking about medication requests and we want to include provenance that has a target of a medication request. And so in this case, we want to say, give me patience uh, and we're doing all of our weird chaining, but we can do rev include and we want encounters that have a patient. And when we do this, we can see, oops, we can see uh, this is our new query, uh, and we can see that we have um, a patient record that has, oops, a patient record that has match, patient records that have a match, and when we get to the bottom, we can see that these are all the encounters that it's including. Um, now, the order here could go in a lot of different ways. It's going to be a server implementation. It might do a match and then an include, a match and then an include. It might do all the matches and then all the includes. That's what this server does. So you really do have to parse these and resolve the links within the bundle to understand what's happening. Uh, but you can see if the server supports it, we can get a lot of information here uh, very easily uh, because we can start adding more things like rev include uh, observation patients uh, because we have this observation resource and do the same thing. And so we can see our data is getting bigger. We're up to three and a half uh, megabytes, roughly, uh, of data, which, there we go. It's not uh, letting me parse nicely now because the uh, editor is not happy. Uh, there we go. It's just trying to catch up. Computer's acting a little slow today. Uh, but now we can see we have not just the patients and the encounters, but the observations as well. And uh, yeah, it, uh, this, particular editor doesn't like it, these files getting uh, too big, but uh, that's okay. So we can start building all these things out. Rev include is a pretty expensive search. 
Um, so you'll want to keep that in mind, uh, as we've talked about in a lot of other coding. You know, when you get a one-liner that you can do it, it seems like, hey, we should just go ahead and do that quickly. Uh, but it's much preferred to, for instance, if you wanted all the encounters in patients, um, the one that's based in encounters is going to be a much faster query than the one doing the reverse. So for instance here, if we just get rid of this and we say, and I haven't actually done this here, but this is should be the case. If we look at uh, encounters and grab the patients, you can see it took us 21 milliseconds. And when we do patients, rev include the encounters, it took us 375 milliseconds. So you can see it's a much more expensive query to do the reverse because what the server is doing is saying I'm starting from patients then I'm going to this other resource checking for links and then adding them whereas this one's saying I'm starting from the one that has the link and just following those links when it has them so uh, you'll definitely want to pay attention to things like that um, yeah so that's include rev include uh, and chaining um, you can see there's some additional rules. Obviously, it's talking about things that it has to be an actual reference uh, in order to follow links. That's true in uh, both cases for chaining and uh, for including. Uh, but you can see anything that links to another resource is supposed to be a reference. So uh, you can see, you know, on encounters, we have different things, accounts, appointments, things like that, diagnosis that makes sense. Uh, and, you know, you can build something that's pretty useful. So, you know, in a single query, we can say, you know, include any uh, diagnosis as well. Uh, and same thing, you can see it's a very fast query uh, and there are more results, but we have some set of encounters uh, and then we will have the patient record that this is for uh, right here, patient record, resource type patient. Uh, and in this case, there is no diagnosis so, uh, to add. But um, you can see, you can start grabbing a lot more information with a lot fewer round trips. So, perfect. Uh, shorter video today, uh, just because that's a great place to stop. Um, I believe next time we can get into some actual coding doing these things. Uh, and because I think we've covered enough of the surface area, I won't say we've covered all of it, but uh, enough of the surface area of search to uh, encounter for most or to account for most of what you're doing. So, uh, again, if you have any questions or comments, please let me know. Uh, and uh, thanks for watching. Cheers.